Okay, I want to walk you through one example file for the first Toby Lab. Um, so if you go to the 441 homepage, you can access the lab through the labs link, as you might expect. Uh, it's got a link here to Toby Lab number one. I've actually already opened it. Uh, once you click on that link, it'll yeah give you the same um, web page in a different, slightly different frame. Um, but it looks like this. So. Uh, there's a few links here. Um, there's a guide to making text grids in Prot, which is what we're going to walk through as we do this. Uh, so that's a PDF file that looks like this. Um, so you can download that to your computer. In order, in order to be able to do this, uh, normally I have you guys um, follow along as I'm walking you through this example during class. So I'd recommend that you download this example file as you're watching this video and try this yourself. Uh, so it's a um, file labeled nominated. Uh, I've actually got it already loaded up here in Prot. It sounds like this. He was nominated. Yeah, maybe I'll turn that up a bit. Uh, yep. Uh, so that's why it's called nominated. There's also four um, other sound files which are going to um, form the first exercise set. So what I'm going to want you to do is to, we're going to walk through this one together and then you're going to create Toby transcriptions for these four files in the exercise set, and I want you to send me those transcriptions um, by next class time. Ideally, I'm hoping to repeat this whole process when fall comes and we'll walk through this live together on Zoom, but I'm recording this just so you have a recording um, that I know works well. Um, so yeah, I've already don downloaded, nominated, uh, and I've loaded it up in Prot, but the first steps on this handout um, for making text grids in Prot <clears throat> are to open up the Prot to begin with and then you download the example file from that link and you load it into the Prot objects window so I'll give you well you can pause here if you want to um, uh, take the time to do that but just download it to your machine somewhere and then open it up in Prot and we have a, um, something that looks like this and lo and behold it kind of um, looks the same on the handout as it does in real life, which is nice. Okay, so the tricky part to this, or the totally new part to this, uh, is that we're gonna create what's called a text grid um, for this file that we can label with Toby transcription conventions. So highlight the sound nominated here and go to annotate in Prot, and then just say go to text grid and you'll get a little window that looks like this. And again, I'm gonna replicate it here on the handout. <clears throat> it has these kind of funny defaults, uh, which we're gonna ignore for this exercise. Uh, and we're going to create um, four different kinds of tiers. <clears throat> so as you saw at the end of the last lecture, um, I give you at least two tiers. One was a tier for the pitch accents and the other was a tier for the um, break indices that we use in the Toby system. Uh, and there's actually gonna be two more that we'll use here. Um, so you wanna create four of these and they each have a different name. Uh, so the first one is gonna to be tones uh, for our pitch accents. The second is gonna be words for our um, word transcription for all the words in the sentence. Uh, the third is gonna be the breaks for the break indices and the last one is mis. Uh, for the miscellaneous items or notes we might want to make on the Toby transcription. Um, there's a second uh, field here for which of these are point tiers, um, and that's a tier where we can specify a specific point in the sound file as being where something happens. Um, those two tiers will be the ones we've talked about so far, the tones tier for the pitch accents, and the breaks tier for the break indices. So we're gonna be able to label those with specific points where we find particular pitch accents or break indices. Um, before I hit okay here, I'm gonna specify that you need to make sure, be assiduous about this, that the spelling you use for these two things matches up perfectly, otherwise it will break the system. Uh, so it has to say tones and tones and breaks and breaks, don't misspell any of that, uh, otherwise this won't work. Um, so got it? Spell this exactly the way I have it listed here and you should be fine. Okay. All right, so when we do that, we see a text grid open up here in Prot. Um, so we've got both a sound nominated and a text grid nominated. 
Uh, so what I want you to do is to click on both of them at the same time. So if you click on one, you get one, and blah, 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 blah. The other uh, can be clicked on as well. Click on one and then uh, press the shift key, uh, and then click on the other, you get both. Uh, and when we do that, um, our set of options here reduces greatly to just these few that um, we can use. All you need to do here is click on view and edit, and we'll see, um, the sound file, this is kind of what we normally see in Prot if we just look at the sound file by itself. Then all of a sudden we have uh, our various tiers here that we created for the text grid, which is kind of cool. Um, our new version of Prot has all these IPA characters in it. It kind of constrains the space here a lot, but we'll survive. Uh, this is what it used to look like in the old days that we can no longer go back to. Okay, so um, anyways, uh, I happen to have had the pitch range for this set between 100 and 350, uh, which I did, I think, at the end of the last, or the second lecture in the course on pitch tracking. Um, that's a pretty good pitch range for this particular speaker. We can listen to this again. He was nominated. He was nominated. Yeah, because um, we we're kind of filling in the whole space of the pitch range here, but just remember that you can tweak this if you want to. Uh, and it helps if you can kind of set it uh, at a range where it's easier to see the sort of bumps and valleys in this thing. Like the default pitch settings are blah, 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 75 to 600, right? We've talked about that before. And if I do that, also that bump gets a lot smaller. It's harder to see. Uh, so that doesn't really help much. Um, we could all, um, to give you that other example that we were worried about of pitch having, if I make this too small on the high end, I get this problem where all of a sudden my pitch looks like it's half of what it's supposed to be. And it says 153, it goes a little bit above 300, it should be like 306 or something. So make sure you don't get stuff like that if you can avoid it. Um, that's why 100 to 350 is pretty good here, but it'll change from speaker to speaker, right? So yeah, it's like 307. Um, Okay, so we'll start with that. Um, and I'm actually gonna walk you through this slightly differently from the handout. Uh, so the, in the handout, it first walks you through how to transcribe the tones tier. I usually think it's easiest to work on the word transcription first, because that kind of gives you a framework for it. So actually skip to, yeah. What is this, step number eight? Yeah, skip to step number eight. Um, and we're gonna focus on this words to you here. So he was nominated. He was nominated. What we want to do is kind of segment out the three words in this utterance. So um, what I'm gonna do is click on where he ends. He, he, he. Um, so this gives me a line of different um, bars that I can click on here down in each of the text grid tiers. I'm gonna click on this little blue circle at the top of the words tier and all of a sudden I get a boundary. Um, I'm gonna do this again at the beginning of this. This is a bit of overkill, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So I'm gonna click here. I get all these gray bars lined up, and this means I can create a boundary right here. If I can click on that. Yeah, okay. Uh, and now I have, um, I can sort of select segments of this if I want to. He, he, he was nominated. Pretty easily, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do to label it, I'm just gonna click on that and type in the word he. Uh, and it appears up here and it appears down here as well. So try that again. Click where I think was ends. He was, he was. Um, right about there. And then I click on this blue circle at the top of the gray bar and it splits it up into two different um, domains based on this boundary. Uh, so. Nominated. And it was. So this is was, I'll just click on this and highlights and I type in was and I click on this and it becomes nominated. Um, so a couple things before I move on. Uh, let's say you feel like you didn't quite get that boundary right where it's supposed to be. It was, it was. Um, you can grab the, you can click on this boundary right here and then move it around. It was not. Okay, that's not right, right? I'll move it back. It was, it was. Um, let's say you don't like it at all. You put one in there you didn't need to have. You can click on it and go to boundary and then say remove. Nominated. He was nominated. So we know these are two separate words. He was nominated. It's not the word was nominated. 
Uh, so we're going to need to put that back in, and when we do that, we're going to have to fix that labeling as well. So when I put it back in, blah, we didn't want that. Uh, so I'm going to have to delete that. Oh well. Um, but that is okay because I actually wanted to add another one over here to kind of end it out where nominated itself and nominated. Uh, so everything looks kind of nice and clean. I've got three different sort of segments for each of the individual words. He was nominated. Okay, that's how the words here works, and it's going to help us, like I said, um, with a, provide a framework uh, for how we're going to do this transcription. So let's go back a little bit to step number six, uh, and let's focus on the tones tier first, because um, it's kind of the meat of how we make a toad beat transcription. So uh, for now, we have two tone types, um, high and low pitch accents, high star, low star, and then we have two boundary tones, high boundary tone, low boundary tone, high percent sign, low percent sign. Uh, so what we want to do is kind of focus, first of all, on the syllable that sounds the most prominent to us. Uh, and you can use the pitch track as a guide for this, but actually what I want you to do to start off with is kind of close your eyes and just listen to this because you should just by hearing it be able to kind of visualize what's the most prominent syllable that you hear. He was nominated. Close your eyes again. He was nominated. Which one of those jumps out at you? He was nominated. If you're like me, you hear the most prominence in this syllable, nom. 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 Which is um, the stress syllable in this four syllable word nominated. Uh, okay, so uh, to mark that, we can, you know, hopefully you can hear that, that the F0 is going up on that particular syllable. You can see that really nicely and clearly here. Um, this is the whole syllable here. The actual pitch peak, the F0 peak for this guy, happens a little late in the syllable. It's happening on the M bilabial nasal part of it. Um, normally the way you transcribe it though is you pick a spot, usually kind of in the middle of the syllable. Uh, well, we'll just put it at the peak here to keep things simple. And we'll say that's an H star. So actually I'll do that again in slow motion. Uh, I'll remove that one and go back. So I'm clicking here and I'm gonna get a slightly different response from Prot when I click on this circle at the top of the gray bar. Uh, it's gonna open up a little gap in the middle of that bar because this is a point here. So I'm marking a particular point in the text grid. So I'm gonna say that's an H star. Uh, just type that in like that. He was nominated. And that's my pitch accent. Um, as before, we get the same kind of pattern we saw for the other statements in the lecture that after this H star, the F0 just kind of descends toward the end of the utterance. Uh, hopefully you can easily conceptualize. He was nominated. What we've got here at the end is a low boundary tone. So the way I would like you to transcribe uh, that boundary tone or to place it to make sure that it lines up with the end of the word is to click on the end of the final word boundary, or sorry, the boundary at the end of the final word. Uh, and then that will line up everything on across all of the four tiers. Uh, so then you can click on this and say, well, that's a low boundary tone. He was nominated. And it looks nice and neat that way. We just learned that whenever you have a boundary tone that has to align with a four break on the break indices tier, and you can easily get that to work as long as you stay clicked on this um, segmentation uh, just by clicking on this uh, tier at the blue circle at the top and then typing in four at the end of it. We can do something similar, click on the end of this word. Uh, this is a word boundary, so it's gotta be a one. This one is a word boundary as well. It's gotta be another one. He was nominated. Um, I walk you through that in the handout in step six and seven for the tones tier and for step nine we do the break into C's um, kind of along the lines that I just did here in the video on the example. Uh, lastly if you really want to you can put something down here in the miscellaneous tier uh, that's just in case you want to make any notes to yourself or to me when you send in your transcriptions um, for our purposes uh, we can just say something like this uh, because we're done with this. Uh, it's not that hard, right? 
The last part that might be a little bit tricky though is that I want you, I don't want you to send me this particular text grid because I showed you how to do it um, exactly basically. Uh, but what I want you to do is to send me your text grids. Um, so what you can do with that is close it, go to the object window and highlight just the text grid and you can say save as a text file and then it will save. I don't want to save it there. I'll just save it as my desktop. So it's going to save in this .text grid format. Um, save it wherever is appropriate on your machine. Um, and then later you can find that file and attach it to an email or upload it to D2L to send to me as um, evidence that you actually did this assignment. Uh, but that's how you do that. You just save it. Uh, okay. Uh, I think that's the end of the handout. Yep. Uh, like I said, Going back to the Toby Lab, here's your guide for making text grids. Here's your example file. There's these four exercise files. I want you to walk through all four of these. Um, and I don't know to what extent we'll actually do this in class together, but send me your text grids for all four of these uh, and I will give you credit for doing the assignment. Again, I just give you credit for um, trying this. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want you to give it your best effort so you get the practice of doing it. Um, and that's how you make a text grid in Toby. It's an extraordinarily useful and powerful tool. So now it's in your disposal. Use it only for good, not evil. I'll see you next time.